Hello, I'm Atsubo George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, join me now as we call for our daily bread. And when we do, expect a miracle today. Praise God. Yes, expect a miracle today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, then let's go say, Father, I demand today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, while we're praying, the Lord showed to me someone, yo, you've been trusting God for a while now for a car. That car is going to come to you miraculously. You're not going to sweat over it. God is going to open a way for you and that guy is going to come to you miraculously. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we bless you for today's broadcast. Thank you, Lord, for your eyes are upon the righteous. And today you will bring forth your truth with clarity. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, praise God. Now then, I began to talk to you yesterday about the man or the one whom God will bless. How do you prepare yourself? Yesterday, I was talking to you about what, what you know, uh, the, the uh, describing what the blessing is. And I use Saul as an example, King Saul. Saul had been made king, but God had not blessed him with the kingship and he lost the blessing of that kingship is it not amazing and now if you read that that first samuel chapter 13 from verse 1 you would understand that paul was in about the third year of his reign when god said ah, i can't bless you with this kingship Yet, he still spent 40 years on that throne. See, some people don't realize, you know, many times people don't understand how God works. Understanding God, one of the things you must understand about him is that he's never in a hurry. Why is he never in a hurry? He's an eternal God. Hurrying to where? What makes you impatient? I'm talking about you now. What makes you hurry? What makes you impatient? Is because you are you think in your mind that you're limited by time. See? So you tell yourself there are certain things you must accomplish within so, so and so time. But God doesn't have that limit. He dwells in eternity. <laughs> No one is regulating his time. So everything God does is according to purpose. And until purpose is achieved, he's not doing anything further. You just want anything it to happen to you anyhow. Just, just anyhow, have waited for so long. But God does things according to his purpose. Now, if we begin to function with God according to his terms, that's what John said, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we'll be fellowshipping together. If we do not walk in his light, we can have fellowship. And what does that mean? Even him cannot fulfill his word in our lives because there must be fellowship for his word to be fulfilled. So God doesn't, he's not in a hurry. You must understand that about him. And, and he's a patient God. Now, so we find Saul. He's been made king. Three years after he was made king, God now wanted to bless him with the kingship. But before that blessing will come upon his life, God had to test. And he failed that test. And Samuel said to him, says, Oh, you have done foolishly. For now, the Lord would have given this kingship to you forever. But now, your reign will not continue. Now, if you are there listening to that word, you think, wow, so this man is just going to drop dead now. Or, or he's going to, that means someone's going to overthrow him or something. 
Nobody overthrew him. Praise God. Nobody overthrew him. He was still on that throne for 40 years. But God has said, now your reign is not going to continue. See, God wasn't talking about him physically sitting on that throne. God, when God says your reign will not continue, God says, look, your reign is going to end with you. But what I wanted to do was to put this thing in. That's why sometimes even today, when we talk about the king of Israel, most Christians forget that Saul was the first king of Israel. Most times, who do people remember? King David. Why? Because God has said to Saul, your reign will not continue. I pray you understand these things. So now then, I want to show you something in line with this. Let's go to first, um, let's go to Psalm, um, book of Psalms. Book of Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. From verse 1, he says here, he says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But he delights is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He says, bless. Let me read this from the Amplified Version, the Amplified Classic. Look at what he says here. He says, blessed, that is happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable, is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, that is, following their advice, their plans, and purpose. The man who is seeking to be blessed, the man who God is going to be blessed, to be called doesn't mean you are blessed. To be called doesn't mean you are blessed. I told you that yesterday. But for God to bless you, it's on another level. And before God blesses you, he is going to check you out first. So now, I'm trying to show you the kind of things God is looking out for. So number one, he says, this man does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. It means he doesn't follow the advice of the ungodly. He doesn't follow the plans of the ungodly. He doesn't follow the purpose of the ungodly. Listen, anything that doesn't have its roots in the word of God is ungodly. That's what it means. So ungodly doesn't mean the native doctor. Ungodly doesn't mean, oh, that wicked man in your village. No, anything that doesn't have its roots in the word of God is ungodly. Any counsel that you cannot directly relate to the instruction of God or the wisdom of God is an ungodly counsel. Any plan that you cannot trace its roots to what God has said it's an ungodly plan. Any purpose in life that you cannot trace its roots in God's plan or God's word is an ungodly purpose. What does that mean? They will expire at some point. They will expire at some point. That's what it means. So it says the man who is blessed is the man who doesn't walk. See, you, you cannot be blessed if you walk according to the counsel of the ungodly. Why? Because you are going to hand over this blessing over to the devil. It's as simple as that. If you are not wise enough, because the man who walks in the counsel of the ungodly, first he's showing that he's a foolish man. He's showing he has no wisdom in him. That is what he's showing. So how can God trust him with the blessing? You see, this is the reason Esau was not blessed and Jacob was blessed. That's the reason. You see, Jacob would listen to godly counsel. Esau will oppose godly counsel. How do you know? You read it up. The father called Jacob one day after he had stolen the blessing from his brother. 
And the father called him and says, hey guy, you've got to live here. You've done evil to your brother. We can't even trust that your brother will live peaceably with you. So you've got to leave. Okay, so what do I do? He said, go to your mother's people. And specifically, he told him, go and marry from amongst his daughters. Okay, thank you, sir. Now, you want to think about it. You want to tell me Jacob didn't have one young lady he was eyeing in that place. Remember, at this point, Esau was already married and they were twins, see? So it's not like he was such a young man. He was, no, no, his twin brother was married already. Actually, his twin brother by then, I think, had two wives. And his father told him, this is the point and this is where you should go get married. Okay, thank you, sir. And then he, the Bible actually said, Esau heard when that counsel was given to Jacob. He heard it. But when he got up, you know what he said? He said, hmm, that means the wives I married from amongst the Canaan, they don't please my parents. I know what to do. I'm going to take another wife from Ishmael. But the counsel was clear. The godly counsel was given to him. And that counsel, first of all, was given to Abraham. You remember the story? That's why Abraham had to choose, send his servant to go exactly where Isaac should get a wife from. Now, God has given his counsel. Esau wasn't ready to walk in, his counsel, in God's counsel. So he, he made his choices by himself. So you see, when people feel that they are, they make, they, they, they have their own mind. When people feel that they can do whatever they like. When people feel, it's my life. I don't like all these things that somebody will be telling you what to do. I, I don't like, you see that rebellious spirit will not allow you to be blessed. You cannot walk in the blessing. You know, everybody, you know, sometimes like, I just want to be free. I just want to do what I like. I just want to wake up when I like. I just want to wake up. I just want to, you know. But you see, life itself should have taught you that that is impossible. Very impossible. Say, so why? Yeah, because say, nobody should control my life. I want to do what I like. But you still get up early in the morning and get to your workplace. Why? You say, it's my job. It's controlling your life. It's telling you when you should wake up. It's telling you the days you should come to a certain place or not. You understand what I'm talking about? You're under control. You are under control. But you see, the thing about life is you ought to, you know, you don't let life control you. You choose who you submit to be controlled. That's the truth. And that's all God is demanding from you. He's there. He's not going to force you to control your life. But he's watching out for you to submit to him that he will control your life. Now, what do I mean control your life? He's already got plans for you that he finished before the world began. So when I say control you, all I'm talking about is coming to his plan that he will lead you in the path that he has already ordained for you. See that now? So now then, he says, you don't, you, don't, you don't follow the advice of the ungodly. So when the ungodly give you an advice, no matter how good they sound, no matter how, 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 how garnished they are, no matter how you, you think you can see prospect in that advice. He says, don't take it. Don't walk in it. Don't follow their plans. Don't follow their purpose. He says, the next one, he says, now stand submissive and inactive in the path where sinners walk. You see, you know, the wrong people are going in this direction. And they said, hmm, let me follow them and see. You submitted to them. Or you are just going. Say, I, no, I'm not part of them, but, you know, but you're there. You're inactive, but you're still there. You won't be blessed. You won't be blessed, praise God. Then he says, oh, no, 
sit down to relax and rest where the scornful and the mockers gather. You shouldn't find yourself in places where mockers are gathered. When people sit down and they mock others, they mock God. They, you, you, you shouldn't sit in such places. Not even on social media. Don't join such conversations. Don't. Why? You see, when you do things like that, you're setting up yourself for failure in life. There is no two ways. There are no two ways about it. You will fail in life if you set up yourself for walking in the counsel of the ungodly, standing in the way of sinners, sitting with this comfort, you will surely fail. It's not a curse. It, you, the reason you will fail is because God's hand will not rest upon your life. I'll see you tomorrow because our time is up. Praise God. But I pray that the Spirit of God will guide you today. Let the Spirit of God hold you and lead you in the path that you should go. Grant you grace to think right today. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.